But anyway, anyway, you see, 67 is not necessarily very old, neither is very young. But one thing I would like to throw my heart out before his presence in front of you. Not in the perfect sense, not in the perfect sense. But the drive in my life, especially now, it is heavenward. Now, I'm, I, I'm not saying this in a boastful sense. I'm saying it, I, I'm bearing my heart out before all of you. I must say, when we age, something begins to happen. Our body seems to fail us in some ways, in some ways. For me, when my wife celebrated my 60th birthday, that was seven years ago, immediately I felt my, my physical uh, being seems to take some, you know, winding turn. It's not life and death issue, but I begin to have a little bit of here la, hearing la, a little bit of back la, this and that. La. But I accepted it. To be very honest, I accepted it with, with, with a heart of gladness. I said, Lord, I am for you in, while I live or while I die. Now, this is not pessimistic talk. I have always been a very jovial person all my life. I have always been, you know, you know whenever we are in a group, I'm always the one who... Oh, it's very lifted and all that. So I'm not being pessimistic. I'm just being realistic. Okay? So that drive by the grace of God to the message. Heaven word. Heaven word means heaven word. Not just horizontal. While well, we live horizontally, but we heaven word. The word gaze is not just look. If you look it up in the Google dictionary, gaze may be translated as look. But gaze is a stronger word. Gaze means looking without looking at anywhere else. Heaven, gaze. Which means you keep gazing. You keep looking, beholding. That is why in the scripture, in some translation, that you will always find the word behold Christ. Behold the Lord. Which is not asking us to look once in a while but is to gaze upon him. And thought, when you gaze upon something without turning to other distraction, right, the thought will fill you. And the thought from the Holy Spirit through the teaching of the Word. Now, I must under, I must understate this first, okay? God can only reason with people after His Spirit, His Holy Spirit has quickened with a sound mind and a sober thought. That is why whenever you share Christ with people in a real biblical standard, not everyone should be so easily wanted to become Christian. Am I right or not? No, it cannot be. You know why? You know why I say that? Because the Holy Spirit must do His work. You know? Denise just sang the song, the lyrics, nothing can separate us, isn't it? That is a statement proclaiming election. Election. Now, wait, 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 wait. I'm not saying, I'm not using the terminology once safe, always safe. I don't like terminology because it shortens, it actually restricts meaning of something, a very important issue. I would say election, which means, which mean, right, in Philippians chapter 2, Paul said, I thought I mentioned that on our Thursday Zoom, in my presence, uh, you have done well. But in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and tremble, isn't it? But, a lot of people stop there and say, see, you have to work out your salvation. You have, to do, you have to do good. You have to do this just like other religion. That is not true. But Paul continued the next verse say, what? It is God who works in you for his good pleasure. Now, please take this, take this appropriately. Take this sensibly. 
all right? God's sovereignty, human responsibility, all right? But the human responsibility is come after, not before. You see, God can only reason with fallen people. All of us were once fallen, but now we have been quickened, we have been awakened. But those who are not in the Lord, those who, you know, take it, you know, those who are religious people outside, we are all fallen people. Our mind has been, has been blinded. Paul said we have been blinded unless God opened up our mind. So we cannot reason things without. Yes, you can tell them. Well, well, you know, some simple uh, 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 challenges. Well, you, you know, you you can say all these things you want, but only the Lord knows whether He has quickened the person or not. Right. So, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, need to quicken the hearer's mind before God can reason with him through your speaking of his word. Try tell someone, say, God loves you. If the, what happens if the person answers you, I, 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 why do I need God's love? <laughs> I think I have sufficient. My husband loves me like nobody business, right? My, pet, my children have been terribly good to me. I am successful. I'm living in UAJ, one of the, one of the bigger houses. I have a profession everybody look up to. Why do I need God's love? It does not work that way. In order, I'm not talking about help and heaven. That I'm talking about that person needs to know why you need the saving grace of God. Why? Okay, now, I pack it up with a verse in 2 Timothy 1 7. Right? For God had not given up, given us the spirit of fear, uh, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. A sound mind. A mind that has been made alive. And the word of God become life saving us to us. I have been in the world also, just like most of you, right? I have been in the marketing line. I have been in investment, commodity, stock market. I have done quite a lot of things. Maybe not as many as you have done, but I have been exposed to a lot of things too. But eventually, eventually, I know the Lord has been nudging me. You know what's nudging? Keep, you know, not abandoning me. It, it, it means the opposite to abandoning you. When you don't feel anything, when nobody in the church begin to talk to you, sometimes in the correcting uh, 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 sense, sometimes in the rebuking sense, gently and lovingly, that means nobody cares for you. Nobody cares for you because why you are an orphan. The book of Hebrews say, God does not treat us like orphans. He treats us like children. But God is spirit. He used his body. The church. The church ministered to one another. I guarantee you, even as Dr. Guan speaks to you, sometimes in a rebuking manner, he speaks to you, he wants you to be more Christ-like. But do you know that you fellas also rebuking him also? <laughs> I've, I have founded a church more than 20 years. I know. I know. Every time, you know, people think that I'm like a superman, just giving, giving, giving. But actually, it's not true. Because why? I'm a secret learner. I learn about life you don't even know. Huh? I tell you, just to give you an example. When I go to coffee shop for my casual lunch, all right? I don't play TikTok, TikTok, uh, video game, and this kind of thing. One. I observe, I observe. And I observe some of the people, the way they behave, 
Even though they may not be Christian, sometimes they have some good gesture. Sometimes they have, uh, they have, they're great in, in taking care of the children, the way they treat the waiter, the way they eat. <laughs> so I learned something from them. But there are some of those I don't learn, I rebuild. <laughs> I, I'm a secret learner. That is why when I minister to people in a church or in a Christian setting, even in a non-Christian setting, I'm, well, looks like I'm imparting things to you, but actually I'm learning from you. So, so it is a win-win situation. Dr. Guan is a win-win situation. Uh, right? When he, when he talks to you, deal with you, you know, in whatever manner, right? He is molding you, but you are molding him back. <laughs> Amen. God save our soul. Okay. Now, today I have two perspective in my message. I guarantee I won't let you go. I won't let you stay more than an hour. I promise. I promise. But sometimes don't trust me also. Like, okay. Uh, uh, but anyway, I'll try to stick to that. Okay. Now, my first section of the, this message is to challenge you. Right? It may stir your heart a little bit, but it is good stirring. It's good stirring. You know, when you go for a nice uh, stew of chicken or fun, you have to stir, isn't it, right? True or not? If someone, one of you cook me, you know, prepare me a nice bowl of soup, I have to stir it, isn't it? Because the good thing is all underneath. But when I stir it, it doesn't look good anymore. But actually, it becomes better because the soup, the, all the ingredient is underneath, isn't it, Amarek, sister? I don't cook, I only eat, only uh, I know. Uh. <laughs> so you stir it, I will stir it out. And then, come on. What happens if you serve me a nice bowl or so? I just look at it. Don't touch it. Don't stir it. Don't, 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 don't mess it up because I like how it looks. So I'm going to use a spoon a little bit, a little bit. No. By the time I'm full, it eat all the good ingredients underneath, isn't it? You stupid fella, isn't it? The good things are all underneath. That is why I'm here to challenge you, the first part of my sharing. Please, take it to your heart, all right? Put aside your, your pride, but don't let go your, your soberness. Huh? Don't, don't give up your, your logic. Keep your logic, but put aside the pride. Almost Christian, almost saved. Now, I'm not saying... I'm applying it to you, or I'm applying to my, am I not applying to myself? Yes, yes. This is a good way to challenge our own soul. Be it Dr. Kwan, myself, Sister Lilian, the leader, the worship leader, every one of us, no exception. I say this to even in the face of reverence, or who you, all the Christian leaders, almost Christian, almost saved. You know why? Because the Bible asks us to challenge ourselves, to, to, to check ourselves. If you don't want people to check you, then you check yourself. The second point that I'm going to share with you is battling depression and lostness. Fighting depression and lostness. Come on, let's be frank. You know, all psychology will tell you, Every now and then, every human experiences some down moment, right? Uh, some down moment. That down moment may not be chronic. So it could be just a light depression. Maybe, you know, some down moment. But when it becomes serious, it becomes depression. If it gets even worse, then it becomes schizophrenia. You, I'm sure you all know. I dealt with people like that all the time. And it breaks my heart. Sometimes I only, I care for them, I do things for them, I fetch them here and all that, be with them. But that's all I can do, earthly speaking. Uh, I say, Lord, no, they must be saved in your word. Okay? Now, the third point is, it's a prayer. Our thirst can, can only be met by God. This is not a sharing. This is just a prayer I written on the screen. And then all of us, before we depart from here, shall stand up and say the prayer out loud. Okay? Now, 
almost Christian, almost safe. Now, this sounds very sarcastic. This sounds actually very, uh, you know, very mind-boggling. I tell you honestly speaking, Dr. Guan, even if let's say this is a pastoral meeting, I will still share this message. Really, I'm serious. Right? I don't care whether you have been 40 years Christian or you are, you are veteran, uh, you know, you are reverend, you, you are some kind of people. You know why? It takes humility to receive good from this teaching or from this sharing. Because why? Self-examination. Even Paul himself self-examined himself. Any Paul among here? Any apostle, apostle Paul here? Goes to him? No. Today, our life actually considered very comfortable, right? Come on. If you think back uh, in the Puritan time, uh, one, two hundred years ago, life wasn't so modernized then. All the Christians suffered. All the Christians suffered a lot. They're, they're called Puritans, really. But of course, I must say that we cannot go back in time. Uh. So we live in this time of era, so we, we go, go with, along with it. I'm okay. Okay, so self examine You need to, if you're in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, 5, examine yourself. Don't worry, I'm going to give you how to examine yourself. Examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith or test yourself. You know, Paul wrote to the church in Corinthians chapter 2, he said, well, test yourself, examine yourself. Or do you not realize about yourself? Do you know your state of spirituality? Do you know your state of uh, your faith in Christ? Okay? And then that Jesus Christ is in you. Unless indeed you fail to meet the test. Now, this is the warning. This is not to put you down. This is not to say you are not. You won't pass the test. This is to test yourself, examine yourself for God's honor so that you know how to guard your life. Both your soul life and your physical life, you know, your thinking life and, and the spirit life. Now, how to test? It's not very difficult. It has been given us by Peter, even Peter himself. In 2 Peter chapter 1, 10, 11, Therefore, brothers, therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent. Huh? Be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, which means, put it bluntly, to confirm your salvation. Okay? For if you practice this quality, now this is human responsibility, if you practice this quality, you will never fail. And what are these qualities? For in this way, they will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right? That means you are in the path of salvation. But what we are interested in is, what are these qualities? You have faith, right? Well, I believe. Faith is not just belief, you know, right? Faith is not giving up your, 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 your sensibility, your logical mind. No, no, no. Faith is something that God, by the Holy Spirit, can give. And their faith in our, our eternal God, to Christ and in Christ. So their faith, check whether you have their faith. Do you love the Word of God? Even sometimes it actually, you know, you know, it, it rebuilt our culture. I know. You know, those days, I used to attend some session, teaching session by right, one, you know, uh, Pastor Reverend. And, and every time I sit there, I always feel that the difficult part is for me. <laughs> After the session, me and my wife will go back to our house along the few kilo journey. We will always discuss one. I think today he speak to me. Instead of saying, oh, the word of God, the rebuking part, huh? the rebuking part is for, is for you. It's you, not me. I'm okay. Intelligent people, wise people, do that. It's for me. It's for me. 
It is for me first before it's for you. That is the way. All right? So faith, virtue. After you have faith, Peter, add on. Please add to it virtue. Virtue is good quality in life, you know. How you behave, how you treat one another. Right? Okay. Then, beside virtue, acknowledge. Knowledge is not just about uh, scientific knowledge. All, all those are good knowledge. Nothing wrong with which good. I tell you, I, 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 I'm a person who go for knowledge. I like to know a lot of things, right? But here is more about the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God. That is called theology. That is why teaching the Bible, sometimes you get bored hearing me from verses to verses or from a passage. You know, Dr. Guan has taught through the whole 66 chapter of Isaiah, no joke, you know. No joke, you know. Some of the people who have dropped dead already, halfway already, you know. Serious, serious, serious. But then that is theology because in the Old Testament, if you, if you realize and know and accept and love the word in the book of Isaiah, you're already saved. That's why it's called the, the jewel of the Old Testament. It's called the gospel of the Old Testament. Not just here, a little bit, there, a little bit. I have spent eight months in the book of Revelation. And I was happy none of them dropped that halfway, to be well. Because I have the assumption that if we know what is going to happen in future, we will live better. Tonight. Okay? So, beside faith, you add to it virtual knowledge of God and self-control. This is the practical part. You have to say, please, 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 be self-control with your word. Don't go around shaming people. Don't go around disgracing people unnecessarily. You, you want to say, don't go around, you know, scolding people. Have that self-control. But the receiving part also the same. If that happens to you, have self-control. God allow this to happen for all. And those who think they are right, they should be the one who are in control. Am I right or not? What's the point of saying that you are right or he is right or you are wrong? Or he's right? No, just let me see who writes about that. I will think who is right. Remember the story I shared with you, right? The two uh, women who actually fight for a baby, remember? Right? One say, well, okay, never mind, split. Cut out, slaughter the baby. Both of us don't get the baby, remember? No? And the other one who is the true mother and say, no, don't do that, don't do that. Okay, you take the baby, let the baby be alive, isn't it? You see, from that story, we could see who is who has the heart of God, isn't it? The truth will prevail. Truth will prevail. I know. I have not been all the time justly treated or so. Uh, right? And I must also admit, I sometimes too fast with my word also. I sometimes have offended people, to, to be very honest. i tell you one serious thing. Huh? Now I look back, I feel very bad. My older brother who came to our church, okay, four years my senior, I think I got carried away. I said, Lord, forgive me, really much. He actually bored. <laughs> he, he, he's so bored that he got no one hair with all right. And I remember those days when we were young, huh, I always looked to him like, like, like an actor one because he has got nice long hair. Like, like Christine. You know. Though being a young man. You know, when we are young, we look, to, we look up to our older brothers. And like, I thought I want to look like that, you know. So, before t before the, before uh, the the preaching la, you know, I I make a joke. Huh? I say now he's poor with him, you know. You know I, I I still look to him, you know, as a bigger brother la. I think that is not nice. I confess, and I may the Lord forgive me. Right, that's not right. Don't 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 make joke about something. Right, people may not be comfortable with it. Okay, so add to it faith, virtue, knowledge, self control. Especially self-control your mouth. Uh, that's why those who are able to tame the mouth is the perfect man. You 
you know ah, uh, that is why all of us cannot. Uh, if sometimes too fast with our mouth, okay. Then the next one is steadfastness. Another translation use the word perseverance, which means be steady, right? No matter how, keep going, keep going in the way of the Lord. And then the next one is godliness, to be Christ-like. And then another one, the last one, actually there are eight here. Actually, the seven one, seven and eight are in one. Brotherly affection and love. All right, especially to those who are in the house of God, you must have that affection and that love. But that verse actually says also, even to people who are not in the house of God, people who are not believers, people who are not Christian, you must have that affection. You must have that kindness, that love towards them, right? But that love is to pray that He sees. He see you. He see God in you, and then later on, when you share Christ with them, the spirit get quickened and come to his rescue. Okay, so you want to test yourself? Test this. Find it in two Peter, two Peter chapter uh, uh, one, three and nine. Go, go and read it. Not that you can do it perfectly, okay? But that is the direction. Okay, great, great now. Philippians chapter 2, 12, 13, 4 now here. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but much more in my absence. Because why? Paul knew he won't be, he won't be able to see the Philippians anymore. You know, he knows that will be his, that his last trip. That's why he's, he's standing with tears. He said, while I'm here, you are doing very well. You are, you, are, you are strengthening your faith. But in my absence, just in case one day I no more coming, right? please work out your salvation with fear and tremble. For it is God who works in you both to will and to work for His good pleasure. Remember, remember, this is not to work for our salvation. You can never work for salvation. If you can work for salvation, you think you will be like other religious people or all other faith. They work, they want to do well, and you cannot do well because it is the inner part. It's the whole person who is not just what you do. So, okay, I, I go to gym from, from time to time, but I don't go there to get a body. I already have a body. As I, as I told them, I told the people who attended, To make my body visible, I put it that way, all right? Not being vain, nah, just say, all right, okay? I go to the gym to work out so that my muscle, my thigh, and all that, uh, you know, a bit bulging, uh, a bit more noticeable. So this is called working out my body, right? I don't work for my body, I work out my body. Uh, then Paul just want to make sure we do not mistake that part. And he said, it is God who works in you. You are willing to do that is because God is working in you to His will and to His good pleasure. Next one. Okay, now this is the practical part, all right? And now I. Let, let's not be prideful about things, okay? Uh, you know, I remember 20 over years ago, I used to think, I don't know what is depression. I minister a lot to people suffering from depression. But to me, it has never occurred to me. Because why? I'm always very jovial, always very optimistic. But then later on, uh, when I began the church, really, there are some certain time or certain period, I actually know, now, now on hindsight, uh, on hindsight, I know I was actually suffering from a little bit of depression. But not to the point of schizola, okay? Uh, depression, which means, for some time, uh, maybe uh, two days or even one day or sometimes for a week, my mood is very low, very low. You know, the things that I like to do, I seem to, you know, disregard it. Things I, you know, I, I always like to meet up with people. I seem to not so, you know, I become a little bit indifferent. Eh? But the Lord always lifts me up. And today I'm still alive. So I'm sharing this with you, not just based on my personal experience, but I draw from the scripture to give you hope. Don't give up. 
don't give up. Okay? So, battling depression and loss means fighting depression and lostness. Yeah, you can go around, you look for Dr. Kwan, look for me, and talk, talk, talk. The most is we give you the company, the affection, the love, right? Right? If I may, I will throw in some scripture to you. You know, and then you, you, you will think that, no, no, I want you, I want you to, to make me feel better. No, no, I cannot make you feel better. Even if I can make you feel better for that one hour meeting, what happens if you go back, the same thing happens? Right, true or not? But the word is eternal. So that one hour, we feel affection for one another, kindness, love one another, like, like brotherhood in Christ. Yeah, that is good. But still, you must take home the word of God. Because when there are times that there's nobody next to you, when you sleep, you sleep alone. Even your wife, your husband is next to you, you sleep alone. I always tell people, every one of us sleep alone. Only the Lord is looking at you because He is God who does not slumber. Isn't that? The psalmist said, God, you do not sleep. But when we sleep, He said, I'm looking at you. I'm making sure your heart continues beating. I tell you, uh, when we sleep, uh, we become very, very, uh, very dangerous. It's a very dangerous state. Isn't that when we sleep, actually, it's quite dangerous, isn't it? You don't know next minute your heart could beat, could stop, isn't it? Right? The building could collapse, isn't it? There's an atomic bomb just drop in your neighborhood. You don't know. Or maybe for no reason, one reason or another, you just don't wake up. I have seen people don't wake up. Okay? That is why we become very fragile. What is there to be so proud of? You tell me. If you don't believe me, uh, you take a picture of the person who is always very proud uh, uh, in, their, in their conscious life. Uh, you take a picture, see how they sleep. <laughs> Nobody no good. Nobody looks good when they sleep. Nobody looks strong when they sleep. Take a picture. Better still, take a video. Is the person very proud? You see? That eight hours, how you look like? You know, like goldfish? You know, like goldfish? You know, cannot keep the, cannot keep the mouth closed. Gasping for air. That is why, what is there to be prideful of? It's good. When you sleep, you say, Lord, I commit my sleep to you. You are the one who sustains my heartbeat till I wake up. Your mercy is new every day. But Lord, you do whatever you want. Let me live and die in you. Okay. Some practical guideline, okay? Now, depression and schizo, right? A chronic stage. Usually, be, uh, have some of these reasons, I share seven of them with you. Physical cause. You know, I have come across some people who uh, succumb to cancer, uh, serious diabetic, uh, diabetes, and, and all sorts of things, accident, all that. So, that, this could be one of the causes, to be honest. That's why sometimes when you all go and minister to people, all right, you, in a way, with the intention of evangelize. Now, the, with, the with the intention of evangelizing, it's not that he becomes your conquest. It's not that you go there and conquest him. You know, no, no. It's just that it, it becomes part of your, your, your Christian nature to share Christ with people. Because after you have left, they only have the word of God to save them. Isn't that right? So it's not conquest. Don't go around and, 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 and evangelizing people with a conquest that I'm going to one down, two down, three more to go. That's not way. That's not way. That's not way. Okay? So, it's real. People who have some physical causes, sometimes depression is really, uh, you know, uh, will come and they will succumb to them. Second, I go a bit faster, okay? Financial difficulties. Financial so sometimes when you minister to people, even though they are not Christian or they are Christian, don't overlook the seriousness of their financial difficulty. You, got, you have no problem, but they may have problems. Okay? But I'm not saying that you should 
add to their self-pity feelings. You understand? I'm not saying that you should say, oh, yo, yo, yo. I'm not asking you to keep money just the way, you know, no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, understand. All right? The financial difficulties sometimes will arise depression. Serious one. Some especially to no fault of them. Then you have to find out, all right? They are in financial difficulty. Is it because of gambling? All right? Is it because of they do not manage their, their, their finances properly? Or is it because of they are, will, they are not willing to work? Is it because of their husband is on drugs, alcoholic, or whatever? Find out the causes and deal with them. After dealing with them, all this, what meet the eyes issue, financial difficulty, share Christ with them. You, the Lord has sent me today to share Christ with you and to save you from a lost soul while you handle your financial problem. Okay, next one. Breakdown in relationship. This is most common then. Husband and wife, uh, family issue, uh, children uh, and parents, uh, siblings, uh, colleagues, uh, and in the church also. Uh, no exception in the church also. Now, sometimes all these keep escalating without dealing with them and settling. Uh, then it builds up. It builds up a sense of resentment. Right? You know, you resent. That means you don't like to go to church anymore. Because you don't like to see this person's face, you don't like to see Soon you will not like to see everybody's face, including my face. <laughs> but I, I want to challenge you. Right? You have a family, isn't it? Right? Maybe your family, you have parents, you have husband, you have wife, you have children. Whether you don't like or not, you like or not, you still go back, isn't it? Why? So why in the church, the family of God under his, his charge? So why are we escaping? Why are we running away? I don't understand, right? Is it the church family, right, is lesser than your, your physical family? Uh, but this is not what Jesus said, you know. Who is my mother? Who is my father? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? Those who love the will of God are my brother and my sister. Listen to me. Any breakdown in a relationship, teach me, show me, go and deal with it. If I tell you, sometimes conflict come in the form of misunderstanding. Not conflict, a real conflict one. Some are misunderstanding. Some are miscommunication. Am I right? Some are actually, of course, you know, too fast a word somebody said, and you're too fast a word to receive it. <laughs> so it may not be as bad as you think. I, I dealt with this issue many times in the church. You know, some let's say, let's say I talk to Dr. An. He says he says my good friend, ma. He says my good friend, isn't it? If later on he take me out for lunch, let's say I, I go into his car, and all of a sudden I accidentally I bang the car. He must be thinking, wow, Pastor angry with me, isn't it? Isn't that true? No, I'm not angry with him. I love him. So conflict, right? And and misunderstanding, miscommunication. What, how it happened? Even if let's say it's true, somebody has offended you. Haven't you offended somebody? Ah, Matthew, true or not? Haven't you also offended people? Sometimes we are our word. Sometimes we are our action. So call it a win-win situation. <laughs> Deal with it. Don't run away from it. If it, it happened in your family, what do you do? You still have to go back, isn't it? Talk to the person. If you needed some external help, all right? Get someone to come in, you know? Go for dinner, go for a drink, and then, you know, lay it out nicely. That should be the way. Of course, the Holy Spirit is the one who will be there to help us. Aging, aging. I know some, some, some of us are, are so healthy, they, 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 they actually 
uh, don't believe in age. You know, saying age is a number la. Age is a number la. Really, really, yeah. really. Yeah. Maybe to my heart, age is, age is a number la. Okay. Come on, when we age, there are some evidences. The body began to fail us in some mystical way. But the thing is this. Age become a number if the Holy Spirit sustain you. I must say that. Not that you become healthier physically, but your mind stronger, your spirit part stronger. It will not make you perfect young again like 25, but it will take you through. Amen. Okay, next one. Lack of purpose. You do this, you do that. There are people who go around from church to church, I went to church. I, I had one with, I had one church member who came to my our church and then he was quite uh, uh, participatory, uh, participating in all the sessions, prayer meal. Then one day he said, Pastor, I don't know what he, why he tell me this. He, he said, do you know how many churches I have been? I said, don't tell me it's seven multiplied by 70, 70, 70, is that right? No, la. They say 13, 14. No. I say, which number this church here? He said, you're the present, the last one. No. I say, will there be a future one? Ha, 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 ha. see, you go around looking for perfect church. How do you rate a perfect church? When you come in, everybody must rush to you. Oh, you're so good to see you. Ah, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> and then the moment you walk in here, everybody greet you like you're so your celebrity. Alright? And then all of a sudden you walk in, the seat that you want to sit is always empty cap for you. You sit there. Then you sit there. Then when teenagers begin to leave worship, ah, this is the song I've been longing to hear. So all the song to your liking, all the song to your choices. Then the chairman start to speak. He will look at you, welcome you. Then you're so happy. And then the message, oh, this message is for me, comfort me. The rebuking part is for Tony, not for me. <laughs> then when you go out, every one of us rush to you say, I want to buy you lunch, I want to buy you dinner, I want to be with you. Ooh, so popular. Come on. There's no perfect church. Come. Almost the opposite is true. Uh, you must ask yourself how you treat others. If you have been right, continue to be right. Excel from it. Rise above circumstances. Let the person who has offended you uh, unreasonably, let him have the, have the coal on his head. The Bible says it's true, true, true or not? Let's say you've been hurting me and yet I become kinder and kinder to you. The coal is the burning coal is on your head. Your conscience will be stricken. Isn't it? Okay, so next one. Self-esteem. Come on. <laughs> you know, I, I you know, everybody wants to look good, look happy. You know? Everyone wants to, 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 to look best. That is okay. That is okay. But then your self-esteem is not built on what you look. Of course, I like to see people who, who, who are decent, right? Clean and hygienic and all that, right? But uh, your, your face, don't, you don't have to have an angelic face. one. And I don't want all the young people to look like Korean people on her. The Korean people, everyone look the same one. Serious. In Korea, uh, when they are young, uh, at the age of 12 now, now this is a real story. Uh, the mother or the parent will tell the young girl, if you do well in your study, uh, right, I'm going to give you a certain amount of money to plastic surgery. surgery. Uh, of course, uh, I understand uh, when we are young, we are a bit, we are a bit uh, you know, conscious about how we look. That is understandable. But don't let that be your life. You understand? Uh, I, like, I, I like one when I see one. Uh, uh, your virtue, you know, the way you carry yourself, the way you dress up, decent. That's good enough for me. You don't have to cover your face. Huh? Okay, next one. 
next one. Ah, uh, this is something I think if those of you who are not who do not fall into the six uh, six uh, point, this last one actually very often is true. Right? Effort and expect. Sorry, effort and reward expectation. I've done this much. I've been faithful. I have to do. Why am I not receiving the reward I deem fair? It's not that you don't receive reward. It's just that your idea of reward is wrong. True or not? Don't want. You come to the Lord. You come to church faithfully. You participate in the session, whichever that you can afford to. You be a servant. You do whatever that requires to do. Your reward is in heaven. Your reward is your spirit or humility. Your reward is in is in your servanthood. Your reward is your helping to build the church. Not every, the church is not built by everyone that speak here. It is also built by the those who, who wash the toilet, making tea, please play a uh, 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 restful place for people to come in. You know, so right, your reward is there. It's not that your reward is not there. It is your ideal reward is that is erroneous, that is wrong. I've been a worship team all my life. I used to sing, I used to play guitar, keyboard, bass, guitar. For well, today, I like the fellows blowing their horn. Ooh. Sometimes I've been sweating myself out, and yet sometimes I don't get the admiration, the admire. I don't get the attention. And somehow, sometimes I get a rebuke. All the time I have been punctual. Only one time I'm late. I got. Or oh, I don't. I all of a sudden I play out of tune. <laughs> Denise, worship leader is in a very important position. How you deal with the people? I'm right. I'm just saying in general. Don't worry. <laughs> I come on. I I know. I I I say okay. okay this song should be sung this way. Okay. Come on, you know it's standard lah. There's a short of people who are helping. So, how long you play bass already? I'm just saying, I'm not referring to the bass. How long you have been playing guitar? Just last month, brother. What do you What do you expect? Play one month, can pull like that. Oh, keyboard. How long you have been playing keyboard? Actually, Pastor, I just learned last week when you dong, 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 ding, dong, ding, dong, 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 dong. Come on. How long you have been singing? Actually, I don't sing except in the bathroom. Huh? What is your key? I don't know what is key. Huh? I only have key to my house door. That's all. Your outdoor, your no, no, no. no. I, I, don't, I don't know. Your bass, I, actually, I don't know. You mean there is such a thing, one, don't you? Come on. Let's understand the church setting, okay? This is not a 2,000, 10,000 congregation church. If this is a church of two, 3,000 people, you don't even have a chance to serve it. And that is no good. I come from a very big church. Right, I come from before I I found out. I come from a very big church. Even with our skill, we have to go for, you know, test. What what what's that word? Uh, you have they, they will have certain days uh, to test musician the voice. The chances to be big is very slim. Come on, understand the church, all right? Under church, understand the church setting. Okay. Now quickly, I, I'm going to share with you. I'm going to run through some of the verses. This is how you should deal with whichever point you know in the list of seven fall into, especially the last one. Okay, please now preach to yourself the truth. 
You don't just wait for Sunday to be preached to. What about Monday? What about Tuesday? What about Wednesday? Wednesday, you don't come. Thursday, Bible study, you don't come. Then you just wait for Sunday. So you must learn to preach to yourself. That means you minister to yourself. Right? Psalm 20, 42, 5. Where are you downcast? Why are you downcast? No, where? Why are you downcast? Oh my soul. Your soul. Ask yourself, why your soul so downcast? Why so disturbed? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior. And my Lord. The psalmist speak to himself, ask himself, and he answer himself. That's what David did. That is what David did. You see, when David, David was chastened for, for having the affair, remember, his son died. Then later on, he went to the, he went to see the, you know, and then he said, my son died already. Okay, that, he moved on. And then he wrote some powerful psalm. So about psalm. Move on. Repent and move on. Okay, next one. Only God can give us what our soul long for, not another human being. Okay? Not, not another soul. Psalm 63, 1. Oh God, you are my God. You are my God. I earnestly seek you. My soul thirsts for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. This has been changed into a song. Parched land, dry land. Come on. Nobody can satisfy your soul all the time. Even young people fall in love, romantic. Uh, they, have all, they have heaven and earth met, isn't it, right? But wait, later on, the reality will happen, isn't it? Okay. Now, God is closer than you think. Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, not self-pity, not those who self-pity, you know, but those who are brokenhearted for His sake and save those who are crushed in spirit. Those who are crushed and those who are brokenhearted in Christ, because they have, they they have, they they can they want to continue to do at least the right thing. If they have done wrong, they repent. If they have not done wrong, they forgive and they move on. This got crushed and broken heart in spirit. That Lord beside you in heaven, who else is there? You are my savior and my Lord. Okay, Romans, you are a child of God. Hold on to it, please. Hold on to it. Right? Romans 8, 15, 16. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, to resentment, to depression, to schizo. I'm talking about those on valid reason, okay? So, but you, sorry, you, uh, you received, the, you have, re but have received the spirit of sonship. You are son of God. You are children of God. And by him we cry, above Father, the Spirit himself testified with our spirit that we are God's children. Your reward, you see your reward. You have received the greatest reward, salvation to Christ and in Christ. And now you are children of God. The earth will not satisfy you. Right? Our trials are worth more than they cost. Trials chastening experience and whatever, things that we don't like, but it bound to happen because God allowed this to happen to strengthen you, to grow you. Lest He will leave you as, as often don't care about you. You try and see, you come in and go, come in and go. A total one, huh? If any say anyone come in and go, come in and go. Huh? Come in quick, last, and then go in, go out first. Huh? Nobody knows Him, is it? So he will have no problem. Do you have any problem in the church? No, I don't have any problem. Oh, you have no how how you do that? Because I come in last and I go out fast. I go out first. So nobody can say hello to me. Nobody can scold me. Nobody can ask me to do anything. Nobody. So you're happy in the church? I think so. Are you going? I'm not sure. Are you a are, are you are you a child in the family of God? Maybe uh, I feel a bit often. Uh, yeah, la? You come in last and then you go out first. You avoid everyone. Come on. Okay? So, yeah. If you, 
if in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trouble. Please come on. This is a common me common minator. Everyone, everyone. Those these have come so that your faith or greater of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Our trials are worth more than the cost. That is why Paul said, I sometimes welcome trial. Who can say that? He's not talking about trial that caused by himself. He's talking about in his cause of evangelizing, in his ministry. They found to be things happen, right? People oppose him, la. people want to kill him, la. people throw him into a. Read about the life of Paul. Your trial is nothing. But of course, that doesn't mean it's not important, all right? If you are the one who caused it, don't repent. If people is the one who caused it, and if it's repeated, then deal with it. Talk to him, you know, talk to her, get a mediator. That's how you should do. Okay, last one. The hiding place. God is our hiding place. Psalm 32, 7. Hey, that's a song, you know. You are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. You protect me from trouble doesn't mean I will not have trouble. It's just that I will not be bound by it. I will not be, I will not succumb to it. Because why? Surround me with songs of deliverance. Yet I may be in that trouble for a little while. I shall be delivered. Amen. Okay. This is my last part already. Okay. But I want all of you to stand up. Can I? All right. So my message has ended. But I want all of you. To, to read out loud in this prayer. Read out loud in prayer, right? Thus met by God. Please understand this, my dear friends. No one can satisfy your lover, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, your wealth, your prosperity, your success. There are experiences of life here among the bad ones to give you a glimpse how God is like. He gave us life to live to the full, but never tell us to live in Christ and eventually to die in Christ. So the question, you have your mic, I want you to read it. Okay? Now, shall, shall we read this prayer loud and clear? No hurry. All right? After every sentence, we slowly to, okay? Make sure this prayer, all right, this prayer, you know, come upon you with the help of the Holy Spirit, all right? To, to be part, to, to, to recite in the inner part of our soul. Dr. Guan, can you lead? Amen. A little. Let's read together, brothers and sisters, shall we? One, two, three. Father God, you are Lord to us all as your people, yet you are intimately personal to us as individual. Help me to draw strength from your truth in your revealed word, and your spirit shall kick an understanding in my spirit, mind and soul. Let my thoughts heavenward when feeling downcast and depressed, burdensome and lost. Show me even more clearly how to have my inner thirst met by you. Grant me hope that the psalmist had in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Come Amen. on, give God a big hand. Give God a big hand, right? Now, uh, I, I will pass it to you, all right? Pass it to you and... Uh, if there's any altar call or any uh, prayer, right? Dr. Uh, Kwan will guide us. Yeah. Praise the Lord for a wonderful message. Shall we give God a clap offering? <laughs> Brother and sister, God never gives spiritual children to Sam and wife, but he, we are all his spiritual children. So anything you want, any counselling, 
is very good in those who are people of a dark drug addiction, depression, and or uh, mental illness. He is uh, he, he always uh, minister to those those people. But if you have anyone who have the, those problem, go and see him. He will always willing to help. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we end this meeting, shall we sing these songs? And when you have any needs, come forward to be prayed by Pastor Sam. And he is a truly a person who really love, not only love God, love all of us. Amen. He is our spiritual father. Because he has, uh, we are all his children. He has no physical strength. He has a lot of time. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's not actually very busy, but he's willing, more than willing to minister into each one of us. Let's sing this song. Please, let me just sing. Me. Sing it from my heart. The your Just feel free to come up, brothers and sisters. Cover me. Cover me, Lord. As you sing it softly, you just come up. Within your mind. Mighty. 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 Ocean strikes and thunders roll. Amen. Come on, raise up your hand. Let the God is good. Lift our hands. He is truly a king of the storm. King over the storm. Overcomers more than conquerors, and nothing can actually hinder us from loving you. Not depression, not oppressions, Lord, not our financial difficulty. You are beyond all this. Father, we pray for your children. Lord, for the next one day, you guide them, you lead them, you show them the way so that their life will never be the same again after encounter you. And Lord, bring them back next Sunday for another session with you again, face to face. Father, thank you, Father. Bless each one of us. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. May God's people say, Amen. And may God bless you.